The embellishment of a book is a dying art. Designed to give a volume permanence and beauty on the shelf as well as in the hand, fine leather binding and meticulous gold tooling of the hinge and spine was the painstaking work of master craftsmen. First, uh, I moistened the leather. The reason for this was to open the pores of the leather and allow the paste to be absorbed. And as the paste dried slightly, it became more workable and would adhere and stay in, in the position that I would place it when I would pull it down over the bands or set the joint. And another thing, uh, in moistening it, it must be thoroughly moistened uh, so that um, uh, as it dries out, it will dry out evenly and not leave any spots in the leather. And uh, it will shrink, uh, and uh, we allow for that also. Uh, perhaps uh, in the shaping of the head of the leather, we'll extend it, keeping in mind that it might shrink and shrink back and pull back. Uh, we don't want it to shrink too much and uh, pull the grain, uh, the nice grain that is in the leather. So we, in working the leather, we don't stretch it too much. On the top and the bottom of the book, particularly, and we call this the head and the tail of the book, we pair the leather very thin on the extremities, top and bottom, and then when the leather is folded back, against itself, it will not show a ridge where this is done. It works around the board. It must be thin around the board where it's turned around so that it fits up tightly and uh, a perfect joint is set in the board and it's allowed to dry in that shape and then the cover will open properly. It's the hinge of the cover to the book uh, that's quite important. It's a mechanical function. And another thing, uh, if the book is back too high, then uh, the edge of the backing will abrade more readily. If it uh, is the same height as the board itself when the leather has been applied, then you will reduce the wear. It's just as simple as that. And the more you work with it, the more that you realize that the formation that you have worked on uh, will remain. It's necessary to continually uh, use the band nipper uh, to shape the band so that in the tooling process it will be uh, straight and the leather will be formed uh, so that a gold line can be rolled across the back of the band. And uh, as the book dries it's much, it becomes easier to form the leather and have it stay in that position. And finally, after working with it to the desired position, one knows that it will remain that way so that it can be tooled properly. Uh, the cover boards have been notched on the top and the bottom. The object of this is that when the string is used, you pull the leather into this notch. There is a little surplus leather there. and. Uh, it allows you to use the full strength of the, of the leather uh, rather than um, having to pare it so thin that it won't serve uh, and last well. And that, after all, that's the reason you're doing this, is to make the joint wear well. By first pulling the string into this, these notched boards, uh, it allows you to uh, shape the head. Uh, uh, this uh, shaping that we do with the head is a strengthening and a, f a finished edge for the top. Uh, and, of course, if the book is tooled, that must be nice and square, so that any lines that you put along the top will be parallel with the top of the binding. So the string is a real important part in the shaping of the head of, and the tail of the book. It, it is relatively simple to shape the leather, but uh, uh, knowing when the leather's at the right dryness or moistness, you might say, 
why uh, it's surprising. I haven't done this binding now for probably uh, oh, 20, 25 years. So it's it's been a, it's been a, a number of years, and it's something you really don't forget. It's just like playing the piano, I guess, or something like that. You just have the natural feel for it. A book can't be tooled, gold tooled in any way, until the leather is absolutely dry. Otherwise, the the heat will just burn a hole in the leather. It has to stay overnight, at least before it can be touched in any way. I am often asked, when I pick up this gold or this piece of cotton, why I rub my hair first. I get a little of that greasy kid stuff off my hair, and that allows me to pick up the gold on the cotton, and I then apply it to the back of the book. I have more on the book than I have on the cotton, and it then goes from the cotton to the book. Tools have been accumulated by myself and my father and my grandfather over a period of 100 years. They're handmade in brass and steel and could just not be duplicated these days. They have to be heated to the temperature that you might heat a iron to iron a shirt well. Uh, if the tool isn't heated to the proper temperature, the gold will not adhere to the leather properly. And uh, if you uh, heat it too much, you burn the leather. Egg albumen sizing together with the heat and pressure permanently fix it in the leather. And uh, we have examples of this gold tooling in our possession that was done by our firm 85 years ago. Still in excellent shape. Uh, when I started to learn this business as a young man 40 years ago, I was busily engaged daily doing nothing but is hand tooling on fine sets of books. Bookish people had large homes, large libraries, and they used our services to a great extent. Those people have either passed on or moved into apartments. They don't have room for books, their children don't appreciate the fine handmade things, and there is not the call for them that there was years ago. The great publishers 40 years ago published great editions of Twain, Hawthorne, Stevenson, in large numbers of volumes to a set. Those are not done at all anymore. A person has to like handwork, uh, the skill of some kind of a craftsman to do that work, and he has to like that. It's like an artist painting a picture or a jeweler making a nice piece of jewelry and that sort of thing. I mean, you can have a, a very useful book bound in a cloth cover that'll last just as long as any that I do but they won't be as handsome. I can see where to place the tool because I have made a mark on the leather. The gold is very, very thin and you can see through it. If we're binding a book on Napoleon, we have Napoleon's crests. If we're binding a book on the Civil War, we have a Confederate flag, and we have things that might designate that period of time in gold stamping tools that we would use. And if we need something special, we will have a special tool made. It's a slow process. The gold is usually wiped off the back of the book one panel at a time. 
usually the bookbinder is anxious to see if his effort is done well. The heat and pressure determines the final impression, and he's anxious to see how it has turned out. And when he finishes his first panel, it is a temptation to rub off the gold and see what he has accomplished, instead of waiting until he has finished the whole book. So I rub off the first panel, and either am amazed or dismayed.